I was looking at a research paper over the weekend, and I found something that was interesting about the rectus femoris muscle. And the rectus femoris muscle is a quadricep muscle. It goes from the pelvis, so right in the front of the pelvis, so it's the left side, uh, in the front lower part of the pelvis, right above the location, the acetabulum, where the leg bone, the femoral head sits in, and it goes down to the knee, and it acts as a hip flexor, so it flexes the pelvis, the hip, forward, and it also extends the knee, so it brings the, the lower leg forward. So it's a, it's a quadricep muscle that uh, acts on two joints, the hip joint and the knee joint. And so it's an important one. And what they found was that when doing rectus femoris training for hip flexion and rectus femoris training for knee extension, it found that whichever one you were doing, it also increased strength in the, in the other movements. So if you were doing hip flexion training of the rectus femoris, it also improves strength of knee extension. And if you were doing knee extension exercise, uh, it also increased rectus femoris hip flexion strength. And the interesting thing is that on the left side, in the left AIC pattern, you often find a rectus femoris that's tight, short, and strong, and overactive. And what you'll also find is a lot of people end up locking their knee a lot. So when they're standing on their left leg, because they can't do it without compensation because of the position that they're stuck in with a pelvis on the left side stuck forward, once that pelvis comes forward, that rectus femoris is put into a position that it doesn't turn off. It can only turn off if the pelvis goes fully back and the hamstring turns on. But because the pelvis is rotated forward and it stays there throughout the walking gait cycle, that rectus femoris stays on. So it gets shortened, tightens, and it strengthens. But it's strengthening on both ends. So it's not only is it keeping the, or contributing to the pelvis staying forward, but it's also contributing to knee extension. And that's why you'll find a lot of people, when their pattern gets too strong, Whenever they stand on their left leg, they put their weight on the left leg, their knee automatically straightens, it extends. And that's compensation. When your foot is flat on the ground, the knee should be unlocked. You don't wanna stand with locked knees. If you're standing with locked knees, you, you are going to be in an extension pattern. So that'll also result in an increased curve in your lower back. Uh, so that rectus femoris on the left side People will often find it to be very, to be tight. If they try to stretch it, quite often it'll be more tight than on the right side. So that is a good muscle to actually try to inhibit by stretching and foam rolling or massage. But ultimately, again, you'll have to reposition the pelvis to get that rectus femoris to turn off. And don't forget, an overactive rectus femoris could also be contributing to knee pain. So working on the knee itself is not gonna work. It's in, this, in this situation, it's coming from the position of the pelvis up top that is causing overactivity of the rectus femoris that contributes to knee extension or strengthening or a straightening, and that could be where the knee pain is coming from. And that is why overactivity of the left quadriceps is often found in people with a left AIC pattern. A big part of the healing process is exercise, and in particular, training the movement patterns that you've lost. So if you like this video, could you please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, do whatever you have to do to, to spread the word so other people can benefit just like I have.